Hi there and welcome to the 12th workout in the 30 days of 30 minute rows. Now today's row is going to be back to that low intensity row and it's going to be lower than usual. Well, kind of, because we're going to do the first five minutes at 22 strokes a minute and round about 2k plus 16 to 18 pace, which is run about five or six out of 10 effort. And then we're going to do one minute at 15 strokes per minute. Now that's really slow, but what that does is it gives you a chance to really get into that position at the front properly, think about about that connection and then just drive in that power. It's a really useful stroke rate. Not one doom that often, but it's quite useful. So we're going to get to four minute warm up and I'll explain more kind of about the pace that we're going to be doing the 22s at. So we have to get our machine set up first before we start our warm up. On a concept two, that means going to your drag factor and setting it to where you want it to be. If you know nothing about drag factor, please set it between four and five because too low isn't the issue, too high is the issue because that's when you start to heave against the stroke. And that's what, if you're on a non concept two, you don't want to do. So set your resistance somewhere where you get a nice feel from it and you're not having to heave against it. Next up, if you can, set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up, you don't have to look down. And finally, set your foot plate height so that you can come into the front of the machine with your shins in a nice vertical position. Uh, if you're set too high, it's tough to get there. If you're set too low, you can go scooting past that vertical position, then your butt scoots out from underneath you and you lose power. Who wants that? So, four minute warm up. We're going to do this right about 20 strokes a minute and I just want you to put in enough power right now that it feels as though you're standing up, okay? So it's not much power. I just want you to think about pushing your feet into the foot plates at the same time your handle connects to the machine. Do you get it? Cool. Here we go then. In three, Two, one, let's go. So it's a warm up, which means you want to start off gentle anyway. So just get your body moving, get the machine moving, and just think about pushing your feet into the machine at the same time your hands pick up the flywheel or the water wheel or the hamster wheel or whatever you've got on your rowing machine, okay? And then if you have a forwards tilt over your hips with your upper body and straight arms, as you push your feet and connect at the same time, all that power from your legs floods into the machine. Okay, it surges into that head of the machine as long as you hold that forwards tilt and straight arms. And then you can swing your back and pull in your arms to a finish. Got a lot to take in in one minute. <laughs> so if you've got that timing kind of right-ish, then you can start to push a little bit harder with your feet. Here the machine accelerate a little bit more. Now if you keep the stroke rate at 20 strokes a minute for the time being, then really this is the amount of a push sensation intensity wise you want to be putting in, but at 22 strokes a minute. So if you have a 2K training pace, then that's between 2K plus 16 to 18. But if you don't, just think it's like climbing up a flight of stairs, but then every now and then taking two at a time. <laughs> okay? So it's just a nice low intensity, heart rate's up, breathing rate is up. Let's take one more stroke. Put one foot on the ground, continue rowing. But the key for today's row is that it needs to still be a low intensity row, okay? So don't push those 22 strokes a minute so, like, too hard so that it starts to feel tough. And those 15 strokes a minute, well, they'll give you a chance to just settle down, to work on that timing between your feet and your hands, and it'll also just let your heart rate recover a bit as well. One more here, let's change feet. Ah, got lazy there, just put my foot onto the foot plate instead of in the strap. I'll pay for that in <laughs> 20 seconds time. But yeah, so let this single leg rowing be what helps your hips kind of release a little bit to get you into that forwards tilt, shins vertical position. Tip one more and I'm gonna put my feet both back in again. I told you I was gonna mess up. Right, legs straight, roll with your back and arms. So swing over your hips to pick up the initial tension of the handle, then pull in your arms. 
and then release your arms to then rock over again. Okay, so you rock, pull, push, rock. Rock, pull, push, rock. Rock, pull, push, rock, okay? Side to the front, straight arms, forwards tilt, and just press out lightly from the front, okay? You don't have to go too hard, because you're just working on the timing here of that foot press and your hand connection. A lot of time spent on getting this timing right because it's so important to really get that power snapped in at the front. You don't want to lose it by pushing your feet away too soon and losing all of that leg power. Right, talking about losing it, <laughs> segue. Um, be warned, in the row you're about to see that I recorded in 2021, I completely mess up the 15 strokes a minute things. I think I totally missed the first one and possibly the last one as well. But just remember, it's five minutes of 22 strokes a minute, one minute of 15 strokes a minute, and just don't follow what the dafty on screen does, okay? And I will see you in 30 minutes for the cool down. So what we're doing then, just to quickly recap, is 22 strokes a minute at 2K plus 16 to 18 for five minutes. And then we're gonna do one minute at 15 strokes a minute. And don't worry about the pace, we're just gonna use this to slow down and work on our technique. And then we go back into that 22, back into one, blah, blah, blah. So five sets of this is what we're gonna do. And that will be our 30 minutes. And then I will, we'll get a chance to stop in half an hour. I was about to say, I will see you in half an hour, but of course, I'm, he I'm going nowhere, <laughs> so. Okay, so we start at 22 strokes a minute, 2K plus 16 to 18, okay? In three, two, one, let's go. At 22, I always say it's quite an awkward stroke rate. Just at first, just to really kind of hit into the flow. Maybe it's just because I'm so used to rowing at 20. I always start a little bit on the slower side. But there we go. Hopefully that's me in at 22. And I'm running about 2K plus 16, 2K plus 17. Which is where I wanna sit for the first five minutes of this row. Don't worry too much if you drop down pace by a second on today's row. These bottom tier ones are really about just trying to keep the intensity down, but your body is still working through the session. And because you're not overtaxing your body, it really gives it a chance to work on your core fitness to improve your oxygen transportation and your blood system and basically all the things that you want as your foundation when it comes to eventually wanting to go fast, be it for a 2k time trial or a 10k time trial. In both cases, you still need good core fitness. Now, I did just spot myself opening my back too early struggling a little bit to hit consistency of pace and I suddenly realized for some weird reason I was swinging my back way too soon and now that I've started to focus on just holding that forward lean and arms straight for at least half of my leg drive. My pace seems to have settled down nicely. So technique, I mean, listen, I talk about it 
a lot. And in fact, I've just recorded the first of the form check Friday's videos where I watch a video of someone rowing and then point out the things that could be improved and the things that are good. But there's a reason because it really does help your improvements if you can row with a technique that allows the power to flow into the machine and for you to use your fitness in a most efficient way because you can be strong and fit but you can still be slow because you're not able to get that power into the machine or keep that power going into the machine okay so 30 seconds time we get our first 15 strokes a minute this is really about flow okay about that recovery slowing it down making sure you're in the right positions which I'll talk you through don't worry okay in two one all right here we go then so drive finish arms away rock drive finish arms away rock recover I think I've slowed right down here how slow was I rowing what am I at all right here we go I completely lost the maths two arms away rock recover drive arms away rock recover arms away I was going too slow <laughs> sorry about that folks that was a terrible start to this <sighs> a thousand lashings for me okay back into 22 strokes a minute All right, that didn't quite go how I wanted it to go. Slowed down too much. My inability to count down in fours. <laughs> Let's hope we can do better next time round. Again, a more professional person would stop the video start again but not me because well it's not about showing you that I can mess up as well but these 15 strokes a minute can be uncomfortable can be awkward even if you're confident going into them you can still just get the rhythm wrong which is what has happened to me mostly I'll say because I was trying to talk too much through them trying to fit too many words in and slow down as a result idiot <laughs> anyway so technique wise let's at least talk about what you're meant to do this time before we need to do it so the whole key of these 15s is to let you work on the recovery side of the stroke 
getting the flow, the fluids move from the finish into that rock forwards and the slide into the front of the machine again because you don't want to be stopped at any point you want to always be using your momentum and you want to let that momentum be what helps you through the stroke so you finish with the handle by pulling it into your chest but then at the same rhythm you pull it in at you send it straight back out at and then you allow your arms away to be the trigger that starts your forward lean of your back from that backward position into the forward lean again so arms back and then once your hands are past your knees your back should be in that forward lean all of your weight oh well all of your upper body weight if you have a good posture will have shifted onto the front of the seat so that all you have to do is bend your knees and you will slide to the front of the machine if you don't have that momentum already moving you forwards or the good posture it's not quite as simple as that which is why we practice all right we're good let's try and get it right this time 10 seconds to go we'll slow it right down again two more one more here we go then so drive bend your knees drive arms back knees arms back legs arms back legs arms back legs see how I'm still moving the whole way through this I'm not stopping neither at the back of the stroke nor at the front of the stroke okay so this is what I mean about rhythm and flow I'm moving in slow motion but I'm still moving arms back alrighty let's get back into 22s that went better or at least it did for me anyway so really I could be rowing at I think the lowest I've gone is 10 strokes a minute any lower than that just gets stupid but you should be able to slow it right down and still have a fluidity of mov movement like Tai Chi you're always moving I, mean, I maybe have a tiny pause as I get to the front of the machine when I go from the forward slide to turning it around into 
the drive and that's something that I need to work on is the pause even if it is just for like a 25th of a second I still have this moment's pause so ideally you want to slide forwards and then instantly turn it around but the danger with that is that because you're thinking about moving yourself backwards it's quite easy to launch your back to do that, to go how oh, fast and that's not what you're meant to do as you drive out the front so really what you want to think about is what's happening with your feet and that timing between your feet and your hands so if you roll forwards and the moment you feel your shins in that vertical position you push your feet into the machine so it's not about sending yourself backwards it's about pushing the machine away from you that can help just get that feel for the right connection at the front of the machine which is one of the reasons why you don't want too much of a heel lift at the front of the machine heels coming up is okay you may have heard differently but if you get your shins into a vertical position and your heels only have to come up like a couple of centimeters that's fine it's if you come to the front of the machine and your heels are like perpendicular to the floor or sorry parallel to the floor because you've had to lift them so high that's what people are trying to guard against when they say no heel lift the point is that when you start the drive you get those heels down and push as far as I'm concerned you get more power from pushing with your heels down than you do from pushing with the balls of your feet you'll see some people start that way and then get the heels down but I prefer full feet push right coming up for our next 15s one more stroke you ready let's slow it down drive arms rock recover drive arms rock recover and please notice that I'm not going arms rock recover arms rock recover it's smooth so in out rock knees in out rock knees it's like a smooth curve from phase to phase of the stroke you have to make sure to be in that forward lean arm straight before you bend your knees last one back up to 22s if there's one thing to properly focus on 
the next time round that we do these, it's making sure that you are in that arms away and forward rock before you bend your knees. Really concentrate on waiting for that knee bend because what you're trying to do is set yourself up so that your upper body is in the perfect position before you start your slide forwards which means that you will be in the right place to start your next stroke you don't have to do anything wibbly wobbly if I look at my technique I have a bad habit of coming in then dipping in dip in dip which has problems with power leaks where I have a bit of a butt scoots as a result and don't quite let the power go through my back however one of the videos that I just did the review of for form check Friday was me six years ago at the crash bees in Boston my first ever world championships and I think only my uh, third ever competition and back then I hadn't really looked at anything proper about technique I just kind of saw what people would do in like the Oxford boat race or whatever and think that's what you did and because I was just <clears throat> looking at it from my point of view when I did interpret it onto the rowing machine I was getting loads wrong for instance I would come down low with a the handle then come up low up I don't know if you can see in the video but what happens by doing this is that by the time I connect my feet to the handle I'm already leaning backwards plus my shins are going way past vertical as I come forwards knees right up into my chest I'm also finishing too high with the handle as a result of that early lean this is actually quite a good carbon copy of what I was doing in Boston and by doing that I'm going to go back to my normal stroke I just slowed down from my 2k plus 16 pace down to 2k plus 21 with the same kind of perceived push of my legs so it shows just how much power I was losing with that early swing and that dip of my hands not only created that early swing but the time it took to go down and up at the end of each stroke was about a tenth of a second per stroke so over the course of 
a uh, six minute 40 race. That's what, uh, you know, right about 400 seconds, which is, well, 400 seconds would be 40, wouldn't it? 400 tenths would be 40 seconds. Well, or is it four? Oh, who knows? All I'm saying is I lost a lot of time <laughs> from doing that. Okay, what well, strokes, isn't it? Let's work out five strokes, not seconds. Two more strokes. One more, then we're slowing it down again. And we're done. There we go, so 15 strokes a minute. I missed my time. I think I have. Did I go too long on that last one? Because we're only going to end up with five minutes left. I think I have. Sorry. So too busy talking about Boston. But I missed one of the 15s. So arms away, rock, knees. Oh well, this definitely goes down as one of my worst <coughs> ever presented videos with all the errors, but hey, it's fine. Right, let's just do a solid five minutes of 22s to finish then, no more 15s. Well, for me anyway. Yeah, looking at my split meters, I missed a minute. Or should we still finish? No, I'll tell you what, let's still, because you may have noticed that I'd messed it up and, and you had actually done a 15 yourself when you should have. So let's still finish the last minute. Back down at 15s again. <laughs> Day 12, I made it quite far without really messing up. There was a error, yeah, where I forgot. I forgot a sprint in one of them, didn't I? By right the end of one of the rows, I forgot to sprint. And then this one, I was a minute late for the 15s. But you know what, it doesn't matter. The fact is, these 15s just slow you down anyway. Let you work on your technique and the 22s are just there to make sure you still feel like you've got a good workout out of it. I've told the story before about my squash training days where there was a particular drill we would do that Martin, my coach, would pull out Sunday night session, you're looking for a good old sweaty training session. And he says, two and one volley drops, which is basically where you stand on the tee in the middle of the court and people, two other people are front left, front right of the squash court. And they smack the ball at you and then I have to volley it with a drop shot. But I was terrible at them, hated them. And even more so because kids, there wasn't that much running around and it was a skill session. I didn't get that sweaty run I was looking for. So that's why today's session is the way it is 
the 22s still give you the workout you need to be happy but these 15s are the technical skill side which to be honest the same with me in the volley drops the reason I didn't like them is because I wasn't comfortable doing them if you can get comfortable with these 15s you'll learn to like them a lot more than you do when you're uncomfortable trust me once the flow comes in you're like oh there we go this is easy one more stroke and let's slow it down to our last set of 15s I mean I'm not being flippant about the 15s after all I messed up the first set of them because I was talking so much I couldn't find the rhythm but if you can get into the rhythm of a solid drive connected to the handle so you drive finish handle rock finish handle rock recover handle rock recover arms back knees arms back knees nice and fluid last one arms back knees and that's us done it's like I say I understand that there are people out there who don't even like the 20 or 18 strokes a minute because they're a little bit too slow and it's uncomfortable to, to row at that rhythm so for you folks I'm sure the 15s are probably even worse but the very fact that the reason that you can't get them is because you don't have the flow and don't have the rhythm is the reason you need to do them <laughs> yeah so sorry about that i told you that i was going to mess it up a more professional person would probably have deleted the video and gone again not me and in fact i've rerun it a second time round. if ever there was a video i should have reshot it was this one anyway right let's get into our two minute cool down that shouldn't have been too much work that you need that much of a rest between the end of the row and getting into a cool down so uh, just let me reset my monitor and we're going to do two minutes at around about the intensity you did the warm up at okay so around about 20 strokes a minute and enough of a push so you can just feel yourself gradually getting into a cool down area alright here we go then in three two one let's go <laughs> a cool down area what I mean is that you feel like you're coming into like your heart rate starts to kind of ease off a little bit and your muscles are a little bit more relaxed you want to let it cool down be like a transition between the effort you were just doing and stopping okay you don't want to just go even for something as simple as today's row you don't want to be working and then stop and then just that's it you're done with your day go home or go back to work or whatever try and factor in a little bit of a cool down to just disengage your body and your mind from what you've just been doing but it also helps your blood circulate flush out your muscles all that kind of stuff and then it just I said like mentally it's a good idea to do a cool down if only so that you can kind of reset your memory of what a rowing technique is like because say like in a 2k or like a 1k or a 500 meter by the end of it I'm not rowing I'm flapping up and down on the machine so I don't want my body's memory of rowing to be flapping up and down the machine like a dying salmon I want it to be controlled and smooth and yeah who knows how much your subconscious affects what you're doing but if there's a tiny part of me that or there's a tiny part of my tiny brain that can help me along the way by remembering how to row properly I'll quite happily tap into that okay three more strokes and then I'm done with the cool down you of course don't have to stop cooling down you can continue or you can join me for some stretching if you like now if you don't have time 
that's perfectly fine. Just make sure and stretch your quads and your hamstrings if you get the chance, okay? Otherwise they'll seize up and you don't want that. Um, or you can join Stretchy John, he'll take you through some proper guided stretching, or you can follow me as I do some stretching on the machine. This is perfect if you don't have space to go to like a stretching mat or something, okay? So we'll start off with hamstrings. So feet back in on the foot plates, straps slightly loose so you can brace your toes against them, changing the angles between your feet and your legs. Put your hands on the air, nice straight legs, and then fold forwards, okay? And that's the key here, is that you fold. You're not curling forwards, you're folding forwards, okay? And that should then get you right. You should feel that muscle under your legs, right in your hamstrings, should just feel nice and kind of prominent as it's getting stretched, okay? Not behind your knees, not your calves, not your shins, not your toes, okay? Not your, certainly not your lower back or your upper back, right down here in your hamstrings. So if you feel it anywhere other than your hamstrings, just check some of your body angles, okay? Make sure that you're not doing something wacky. All right, let's go into glutes next. So one leg up on the rail, on the monorail, other foot comes over the top so that your uh, ankle is in line with your the crook of your knee, if you want to call it that. Uh, bring your kind of floating knee up so it's in line with your so you go face, knee, foot. Okay, nice straight line. Hold it in place with your other arm. If you want to hold on to the back of the machine for stability, please do. And then just rotate your torso round down into that glute. And as long as you've got this knee that's up kind of nicely braced as you do that, you should really feel a fantastic stretch down here in that glute. Um, oh yeah. And again, just see that adjusting it then, I could have moved it in the wrong direction and I totally lost the stretch. So again, much like the hamstrings thing, just pay attention to how your body is, is aligned, what you're doing, where you're getting the stretch. Are you holding that knee across your body to two? Uh, get that stretch in. Let's change legs to exactly the same thing. Knee across. Ugh. Because there's no point, just, it's much like rowing itself to be honest. There's no point just going through the motions, just climbing on and going, oh I stretched. If you don't actually feel the stretch, then you're doing nothing. Really, you're just, you're, you're wasting your own time. And it's like for rowing itself, if you just climb on the machine, tickle it up and down, don't really put in any effort, you don't get your heart rate up, you don't get your breathing rate up, even for these low intensity workouts, you're kind of wasting your time doing it. That I'm sure you'll get some benefit out of it, but there's a certain point you have to cross in terms of intensity to get real benefit from it, okay? Right, let's get uh, to our uh, quads next. So I'm standing up next to the machine, just quite lightly hold on to the monitor for stability, because I'm rubbish. Flick my leg up behind me so that my heel's touching my backside, and then put on enough of a pull that I can just feel a little bit of a stretch going through my quads. Um, yeah, not pulling so hard I'm trying to snap my leg, but enough that I can just feel that kind of stretchy burn into the front meaty part of my thigh. And it's just useful just to kind of really Stretching is like running a comb through your hair, really, for your muscles. It just helps, especially after everything being so contracted and opening and closing, opening and closing as you've just been working. If you can just hold them for a few seconds, then it'll help a lot. I mean, back in my days of playing squash, I do like really long stretching sessions where I do hold every muscle for like 30 seconds a time, three times. So I'd like spend a minute and a half in total stretching each of the muscles. So. Um, really right now the fact that I'm only doing what about 15 to 20 uh, seconds on each muscle and then moving on probably short changing so if ever you get a chance to spend more time on stretching please do okay hip flexors next so one knee on the ground with your toes up behind you other uh, foot is in front of you with your knee above it got right angles on both legs and then with a good posture with the knee that's on the ground just push that hip forwards okay Whoa, don't fall over how many times have I said that in this series this time around? Crikey, my, I've, got, I've either gone, oh, when stretching something, or gone, oh, as if I've almost fallen over. That could be today's hashtag, falling down. There's a film from, what was that, the early 90s? Falling down. Still reference it from time to time, time to time. Like the McDonald's moment. Oh, you walk into a McDonald's, you order, you see the, the menu, not that I go to McDonald's that often. Um, but you see on the menu, like, quarter pounder of cheese, and it looks amazing. Let's swap legs. There's a picture of a quarter pounder of cheese on a McDonald's menu. Looks, you're like, oh, yummy, that looks incredible. And then this thing gets delivered to you. Right, so remember, just good posture as you 
ease into that hip to stretch it. See, I'm still on point. But this thing gets delivered to you, this like limp, all the, the, the lettuce and the tomato and stuff in it is just, and the patty itself is like gray instead of meat colored or whatever mystery meat it is. And it's all squished down and flat and whatever. And you, you look at this thing and you compare it to the picture and you go, why am I paying what's now what, three pounds 50 or something, which is what about four bucks 50 if you're American. Um, uh, why am I paying this? Why, why is nobody actually? And so yeah, that was the falling down moment in the film when he goes into and basically he takes matters into his own hands, let's say, <laughs> for that very moment. But how do they get away with it? To, uh, no one else would do that. You wouldn't go in and buy a car. See a beautiful fella. <laughs> hang on. Uh, let's do shoulders. I'll do shoulders next. Okay, that's always a good ranting muscle. Hands straight in front of you. Bring your arm across your body, and then hold it in place with your other arm, and you should feel a nice little stretch up here in your shoulder and your delts. Uh, or in between your delts, I guess it is, yeah. But yeah, you wouldn't go into a, sh a showroom and you see a car, you see like this lovely red sports car and you're like, oh, that's the one for me, that looks amazing, that's what I want. And then they wheel out some little rusty, limp um, dirt bag thing and say, there you go, there's your sports car, yeah, that'll be 30,000 pounds. You'd be like, eh, no, I want the thing that I saw in the picture, thank you very much. Whereas somehow, McDonald's get away with it. And it's not just them, other fast food places do as well. I mean, Burger King was saying. Nando's, however. What you see on a Nando's menu, you get on your plate. I think that's probably why I smile. So I, to everyone on, on podcast, I swapped arms, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, what you see when you go into a Nando's and you order, you pretty much get. I mean, that's quite a good. And Wagamama is the same as well. So I think um, these kind of old school places need to up their game in terms of Especially with the amount of money that they charge for the, the stuff nowadays. It's fair enough when it was old, like 35 cents for a burger. Hands together, right, I'll do forearms. Hands together in front of your face, push them together and then bring them down in front of your body so that they're in front of your chest pretty much. Carry on pushing your hands together and you should get a nice little stretch in your forearms and in your fingers too, um, as you push them together. But yeah, so anyways, that's the last, so yeah, that's my point, falling down um, because I keep on falling over and that's what led me onto that huge big rant about burgers and Nando's and things. I mean, if the people at Nando's want to sponsor this channel, hey, I'm, I mean, I'm totally up for it. I'm bring it up enough. Nando's or Wagamama. All you have to do is throw me a katsu curry and I'll quite gladly put your picture up in front of a, <laughs> a workout. Oh, do you like a katsu curry? I don't know why they even bother giving me a menu when I go into that place. It's like, pfft, I'll wait with your menu. I'll have four chicken katsu curries, please. Oh, that's from the entire family, not from me. <gasps> really? Oh, that'd be nice though. Okay, uh, <laughs> bicep sticks. This is a long stretching session, I'm sorry. Uh, hands behind your back is all your ski jumper. Rotate your thumbs outwards. Um, and that will stretch the long head of your, bi of your biceps. Yeah, okay, so nice little stretch. So I, I, I'm just, I'm not talking anymore. <laughs> I've just decided if I say anything else, I'll be going out on a, another massive rant, so. We'll just sit here in silence for the next two minutes while we stretch our muscles and I say nothing. <laughs> what did I have for dinner tonight? What did I have? Oh, I had eggs. I made myself eggs benedict tonight. Um, yeah, very, very posh. Eggs benedict, yeah. Uh, triceps next. So put one hand up in the air, bring it down to your spine so it's touching your spine. Your elbow will now be pointing in the air, but help it go straight up with your other hand. And that should just put your hand slightly further down your spine, but also give you a nice wee stretch into your triceps. And if you kind of kind of lean slightly your body to one side, you'll kind of get your, your lats and kind of your obliques on the, on the action as well. So you can kind of do this and stretch a few more muscles, but just don't fall off the rowing machine if that's what you're going to try doing. Um, yeah. The problem is with poaching eggs is the, the eggs benedict thing. Never really worked out a proper way to, or a nice way to poach eggs. What I tend to do right now is just crack them into a, a, a frying pan filled with water. So you end up as like a fried egg, but it's not fried. It's just been like boiled almost in water. I mean, it's perfectly fine. Swap, swap arms, perfectly fine, but it's not that. You know how you, if you go into like a posh restaurant or whatever and you, I'm gonna do that same thing where I lean over to the side slightly to stretch my lats and my obliques. If you go into a posh restaurant and, and order poached eggs and it's this little parcel of an egg, it's all like wrapped up around itself. Um, I did make a, a program once, Food Detectives, I think it was called, um, and it had uh, Tom Kerridge, the chef, 
and his way to do um, poached eggs. And actually he was, uh, the way he did it, I did try it and it works perfectly, but you needed white wine vinegar. And I mean, who has white wine vinegar in the house? And it's a lot of hassle to go to just to make a poached egg. Anyway, right, we're, we're done stretching, sorry. <laughs> this has been going on long. I'll make this a bit short. So um, thank you so much for putting up with me and all my rants and whatever, but seriously, falling down. McDonald's, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, next up is uh, the row 13, which I believe should be a mid-intensity row. So I do hope you'll join me for that. Or you can go and look at any of the other rows in this series if you've uh, only popped in on row 12, or you can skip any of them, or you can do none of them. It's up to you entirely. Uh, but hopefully I will see you in another video, whether it's a workout video or an app review or something like that. Who knows? But hopefully I will see you there. Until then, please look after yourselves. Take care, be well. Bye-bye.